This is the Brothers on Books podcast, the greatest podcast with the best brothers talking about the best books. Please welcome your hosts, Jack and Alex, the Brothers on Books. What to do, what to do. This is the Brothers on Books podcast where we find great books that will give you real value and actionable steps and have fun in the process. Please reach out to us at brothersonbooks at gmail.com for any book recommendation or if you would like to be a guest host for a particular book you have in mind. A great review or rating on whichever platform you're listening to would be greatly appreciated. Lastly, if you can think of any friend, family member, or coworker that might like this episode, please pass it along. For the original episodes, the OGs, please visit brothersonbooks.com. I'm Alex Allwile, and today I will be doing my first solo mission. So Jack is not here, and the book I will be discussing is Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, uh, the subtitle, The Story of Success. So to begin with, uh, Malcolm Gladwell is just, for the most part, a journalist. I think many people probably are familiar with his podcast, Revisionist History, which is pretty good. Uh, he write, or He wrote for the Washington Post, as well as the New Yorker. And he's very well uh, published. He has a lot of good books. Uh, Some of the other books I've read that I've enjoyed of his are David and Goliath and The Tipping Point, as well as uh, Talking to Strangers. I think that's one of his newer books, uh, which was quite good as well. Uh, So pretty much the premise of this book is really he talks about how people achieve success and how the forms of success come in. And a lot of maybe some of the uh, almost misconceptions about how people become successful. And I think he's really trying to get away from the, the point that just, you know, being well, one smart and two hardworking uh, propagate success, even though those are both incredibly important. And I think he, he, to an extent, does acknowledge that. But what he's really, I think, out to my opinion of the book, what he's really out to show is that not only uh, to be successful, you need opportunity. And I don't think, uh, and he, he does that through a variety of ways. Probably probably the most well-known uh, thing from this book, or I think that was probably, uh, that was probably popularized by this book was this thought that to be, you know, to become an expert you need to attain 10,000 hours of practice in a given field. Uh, I remember this, uh, this came out in the early, I believe the early 2000s, but I remember when I was playing soccer as a child, uh, being told that, you know, to become an expert, you had to have 10,000 hours of practice. And I just remember like in U11s or U12s, like charting the amount of hours I practiced over a given, a given season. And really what uh, Gladwell equates this to is that whatever skill you're, you're doing, it really comes down to practicing, you know, 20 hours a week for 10 years. And he extrapolates this to a wide variety of different, uh, of different uh, fields like violinists, uh, musicians is the one of the ones that he really he really hampers it on a lot because it really, you know, almost anyone can be a musician, but the, well, not anyone, but people, most people have access to instruments to play in some form or another. But the thing that he really harps on is needing opportunity. Uh, and he talks about this through a lot of different lenses. He starts, he starts really with some selection biases going into Canadian hockey players. And then he talks about, I believe, Czech hockey players or Slovak hockey players and soccer players showing that the way they divide the age divisions in those sports in those countries, you have a massive disproportionate of kids that are born from, I think, January to March. Uh, So for a given year in those sports in those countries, if you're born, uh, if you're born If you're born after, like if you're born January 1st, you would be the oldest kid in a new, in a new age division. So the kids born, you know, January, February, March would have uh, a massive advantage when they're young over kids born, you know, October, November, December. 
pretty much just saying that you're getting, you know, an extra, you know, nine, 10, 11 months of growth and development, which as a, you know, 20 or 30 year old is nothing, but as a, you know, five, six, seven, eight year old could potentially be massive. So those kids have developed more. They then are a little bigger, a little stronger. They are appear to be better. So they then get more attention from coaches. They go on to play on better teams. And then this, you know, sort of propagates through the rest of their lives. Well, that's one of his main uh, talking points. The other one is that really to be successful, you need opportunity, which I don't think anyone would argue with, but he, he talks about that through the lens of a lot of different people. Most notably, he brings up the Beatles as well as Bill Gates. Uh, he says, like, you know, Bill Gates had access to computers when he was 13 uh, through the elementary and middle school that he went to. Uh, they were given access to this, uh, I believe it was an IBM computing facility. It was sort of an odd story, but Bill Gates had access to computers when he was like 13, you know, pretty much a middle school and high schooler. Uh, and he's, you know, Malcolm Gladwell sort of makes the assertion that Bill Gates would not become you know, the founder of Microsoft if he wouldn't have had this access. So, uh, you know, his success is both derived from the fact that one, he had the opportunity to derive these skills and two, he was able to uh, both work hard and be very intelligent to pursue those passions. I, the only thing I would sort of say that I didn't really like about the book is I, I felt like he kind of downplayed a lot of people's achievements. Um, sort of the fact that even though, you know, Bill Gates had that opportunity in, in the book, in the story, the other kids in his school also had, you know, that opportunity and they aren't Bill Gates. Uh, so Bill Gates obviously still worked incredibly hard and had the drive to, you know, seize the opportunity. Uh, obviously, you need the opportunity to become successful, but you also have to go out and, you know, take advantage of it. And a lot of people don't take advantage of their opportunities. Uh, so that would be my one criticism of the book. Uh, other than that, I thought it was really enjoyable. It was a pretty easy read. Uh, it didn't take me too long. I think it's roughly 300 pages. Uh, and plus, Malcolm Gladwell's writing is very easy to digest. And I think he makes some very uh, solid points. Um, yeah, and it was a fun read. So that said, uh, please reach out to us at brothersonbooks at gmail.com for any book recommendations, or if you would like to be a guest host for a particular book you have in mind, a great review or rating on whichever platform you're listening to would be greatly appreciated. And lastly, if you can think of any friend, family member, or coworker that might like this episode, please pass it along. Uh, next week, we'll be back. Uh, Jack and I will be discussing uh, Shopcraft or Soulcraft. Shop craft for soul craft. Thanks. Have a good day.